Hey everyone, so let's uh, continue our text analytics module here. And we're going to move from using the extract ngram features like we did in the last video to, and just delete that, using right here, latent Dirichlet allocation. So this technique's been around for a similar amount of time as that uh, graph theory paper we looked at last time. But this one is super popular, and Microsoft's particular implementation is based on a paper I'll show you here. But let's see, what's a good way to describe this? Late, this is a, a remember when we did um, principal components analysis. The idea there was we took a whole bunch of variables, and uh, in particular survey data. Remember when we had like five survey questions that were supposed to represent one topic, uh, like someone's agreeableness, a personality trait, and uh, I think it was actually 10 questions, then 10 questions that represent their extroversion, their uh, neuroticism. And what we used PCA for was a technique to condense all of those survey questions down to a single score. So there was five personality traits and 50 survey questions. And we used PCA to say, turn those 50 survey questions into five unique scores representing these personality dimensions. And that was a better technique than just averaging the personality questions because uh, each question doesn't have uh, the exact same weight in how well it should represent the underlying construct. We're doing something similar here with LDA. Imagine taking all the text, we pre-processed it, and we take all those tweets and say there's, uh, here, if you click on LDA, there's, we've got it set at two grams. So all the single grams and bigrams, uh, or unigrams and bigrams, let's say there's a total of 2,000 unique ones in, uh, in the entire corpus, or all the, the different tweets all together. However, we're going to tell it, try and boil all those unigrams and bigrams down to five actual topics. So kind of like with the PCA, we're gonna say, uh, there's all these different words and pairs of words, but ultimately we're talking only about five, or we could change it to 10. We, we have to tell it how many topics we think there should be, uh, how many topics are really being discussed. And then it'll use each word by unigram or bigram, and it'll it'll give assign each of them a weight for how much that word uh, uh, applies or or loads on that one on each of those five topics. So uh, we start by telling it what the column contains the text. So we're going to include column name, pre-processed text, check, and let's leave the select columns that we used here last time. We wanted to get, we want to get rid of pre-processed text uh, this time. However. We're not going to have ngram string or, or this variable either. Those were things produced by the, um, uh, by the extract ngram features from text pill. So uh, LDA is going to simply produce, well, let me just show you. Let's go ahead and run to this point, and then we'll discuss it. All right, let's take a look here. So let's start, uh, let's go to LDA transfer, no, feature topic matrix. Let's begin there. So what it's done is it said, okay, you said five topics. Here we go, topic one, two, three, four, five. Here's each of the features. Now remember, a feature is gonna be either a unigram, a single word, or a bigram, a pair. And I'm not sure how it cho uh, chose the order to list these in, maybe the order they showed up or something like that. But 56,000 plus rows means there's 56,000 unique words, unigrams, or bigrams, or pairs of words. So then it goes through each one of them and says, okay, when we tried to, for example, or conceptually speaking, when we tried to draw five straight lines through this, think of it as like a graph of all the different unigrams and bigrams, here's how much each one of them loaded on each of these five topics. So AWS VPNS loads not at all on topic one, most, relatively speaking, on topic two, teeny bit on topic three, not on four, teeny bit on five. So as you scroll down, you can see each unigram and bigram matters to different degrees. Some of them, like these, hardly matter at all anywhere. But it's still going to use even all of them, even though they matter only a tiny little bit, because what it's going to do now, close that and go to Transform Dataset and Visualize, is it's going to take every pre-processed text, and it's going to pull out these words, and it's going to say, OK, the combination of these unigrams and bigrams loads this total amount on topic one, this much on topic two, this on three, 
Mainly, these are about topic four, as you can see. But it still loads a little bit on all of the rest. So now what we have is five variables that represent every tweet in terms of how much that tweet is about each of these five topics. Now, what would be nice is if Microsoft would give us um, uh, some type of analysis where we could click on a topic and say, okay, show me the words that load highest on this topic so, so that we can understand really what this topic is representing. That'd be useful for developing theory or understanding at a higher level uh, what is it that really matters in terms of what tweets talk about and how they then load on, on, uh, on the dependent variable. So anyway, let's go ahead and run this whole thing and see what we get. All right, let's take a look at, um, let's look at train model. So what we get now is a set of coefficient weights for the topics, not for 20 words or, or pairs of words like we got with the extract, extract n-gram features. So topic four, uh, if anyone tweets about topic four, they're, because it's positive, that means they're more likely to get retweets. Whereas if they are about any of these other topics, one, three, and five, the more they talk about those, the less likely they are to get retweets. And that's why they have a negative sign. Looks like gender doesn't really matter at all, neither does sentiment or topic two. So if you, uh, let's start by, let's see what sort of R square we got real quick. 18, okay, this is far better. Remember when we got, uh, when we took out that pre-processed text column in the previous video, that was in there by accident, our R squared dropped all the way down to 11.3%. Now we're all the way up to 18.46%. So this is a this is really good. This was much better than our extract n-grams features pill. What's cool is technically, and here's the difference. In the with extract n-gram features, if you haven't been following along, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, talking about, it's this pill right here. This one said, let's look at all the unigrams and bigrams and give us the top 20 or top n, whatever we wanted to tell it, and only save those that, that had the biggest effect on whether or not the tweet was retweeted or how many times. LDA doesn't get rid of the other several thousand features that we hashed. It keeps all the unigrams and bigrams, but it assigns each of them uh, a weight across a set of topics, so we're not losing any data. We're not losing any of that predictive capabilities simply so that we can save processing power. So I think that's its strength over the other one. Let's just experiment and see if we give it more topics, what happens. Let's run, select and pause. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, nice. It uh, went up 10, 10 uh, topics is even better. I wonder if at some point uh, that Microsoft will give you the option to automatically uh, evaluate different um, numbers of topics and pick the best one for you. But for now, you can easily just try it on your own, pick uh, various numbers until you get the number of topics that best represents it. Now, there's, there's not a lot of science or theory to that because it really all depends on the data set. Every data set you pull is going to have a different corpus, a different set of theoretical topics involved in it. So it really is just a matter of going through and trying various numbers, keep going up or down and then you know, until you get that, uh, that highest possible R squared score or accuracy score if it's a classification model. Anyway, that's it for LDA, very useful tool.